I said I gotta keep it kosher In a room full of vultures uh, And to them eggs blow the chauffeurs I'm a L-O-Z soldier, L-O-Z soldier I gotta keep it kosher This real life mentality We in war with flesh and blood We war with principalities These pastors be manipulating the scriptures They some Pharisees are infidel It's worse than these cracks If you ask me, gotta keep it kosher This real life mentality We in war with flesh and blood Nursing, what about you? Sam, social work, what about you? Business administration. So I would assume all of you are going to college, um, you're putting in your extracurricular activities, things of this sort, right? Because you have a goal of becoming something, right? And you want to be proficient at it, right? You want to be a good nurse, right? You want to be good in business, you want to be good in social work. So now, the one thing about this society, it has taught our women to strive to either be equal with a man, or above you. Now, it's an issue with that because the reason why there's an order is to prevent chaos, right? Would we all agree? So I want, I want you to give me 1 Corinthians 11 and verse three. The world has put a negative connotation on a woman who submits to her husband. But the most high God created it that way because that is the order. We see what happens when she tries to be equal or above him. No real man is going to let his woman stump on his head. You, it, you're just, you're just, the Most High God just didn't build you that way. He built you to defend and protect. That's no, your, the, the woman trying to overstep the man is no different than another man trying to attack, let's just say for this man, another man trying to attack his family, he's going to protect him. Right? Because he's going to stand in the, the position that he was created to be. Right? Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. Bring it out. But I will have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man uh -huh. is Christ. Right. And the head of the woman is the man. So the order, keep reading. And the head of Christ is God. So you have God, Christ, man, and woman. That is an order. Now we know God is righteous. There's no unrighteousness in him. We know the same thing for Christ. So the man is in a position to where if he doesn't submit himself unto Christ, chaos can happen into his household. So I'm not saying a woman should submit to just any man. She should, sub she should submit herself unto a man of God. Right. Because a man of God is going to be teaching her in the ways of righteousness, right? So a woman who is willing to submit to her husband really doesn't have anything to worry about because this man is submitting himself to Christ. And that's what a real man is, right? So now, give me Titus chapter two and verse three. What we have, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse three. And I'm, I'm, speaking from, I'm speaking from a place of experience because I have a wife who is a woman of the Lord, right? I'm a man of the Lord. My son, he's going to be a man of the Lord. We can come together and teach him these scriptures because there's no type of headbutting, there's no type of argument, there's no type of uh, 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 disconnect between me and my wife. Like, how do you go about when it comes to income when your wife is making more income than your husband? Now that's, that's, that's a concept that is introduced from society that, that, that basically says, well, here's kind of like a gray area. If you make more than him, you don't have to submit to him. I can't find that anywhere in the scriptures because the member, the most high God created marriage. So when he created, he said, marriage goes like this. Boop, 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 boop. No, at no time did the most high say in marriage, if your wife makes more than you, she doesn't have to submit to you. That, that would, that would then be taking away the position that God gave that man. God told me I'm the head. I didn't make that up. So you're trying to undermine the God given position that I was given. For you doing that now, it's gonna cause chaos. Because we see women who make more money than their, their partner, they try to use that as a tool to try to rule over their husband. That's not how it was supposed to go. So I want you to read that for me. Titus chapter two and verse three. The reason why I asked you guys what you wanted to be is because the problem that we have in our communities, why there's so much disconnect between the black man and the black woman, the black man is not trying to be a God-fearing man, and the black woman is not trying to be a God-fearing woman. The black man has pride in his social status, his money, and the black woman has pride in her looks and her body. None of those things matter to the Most High God. 
What matters is the type of spirit you have. Because if I got a God-fearing spirit and you got a God-fearing spirit, we should be fine. Right. Because I would know that until death do us part, and you would know the same thing. You're not going to go and com commit adultery. I'm not going to go and commit adultery. We're not going to teach our child worldly ways. We're going to teach them righteous ways. So now everything starts to come back. Our child starts to see a two-parent household, and he grows up or she grows up to see a man and a woman loving each other. Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. Read. The aged women likewise, uh -huh. that they be in behavior uh -huh. and become in holiness. Read. Not false accusers. Uh -huh. Not given to much wine. Read. Teachers of good things. Read. That they may teach the young women. That they may do what? Teach the young women. Read. To be sober. Uh -huh. To love their husbands. So to teach the young women to be sober and to love their husbands. A lot of older women are not teaching the younger women how to be wise. One, because they probably weren't taught how to be wise. So now you guys don't understand how to be wise. But then what happens? The cycle just continues because the chain isn't being broken. So what we have to do now with our sisters is say, listen, your position on this earth is to be a help me unto your husband. I didn't say that. That's what the Most High God said. Anything outside of that is contrary to the structure of marriage, which is why so many marriages fail. So you see your husband being a God-fearing man, you're a God-fearing woman. Let's say your husband does something that is that's against the Most High God. You would go and try to restore him and say, baby, that was wrong. You shouldn't have done that. Let's get back on track. I know you probably had a, a long week at work and you was frustrated and you did something out of character, but let's get back on track. That's the type of position you play. Likewise, I play the same position for you. But the issues that we have in our relationship and all these relationship uh, uh, podcasts omit is this very structure, Colossians 3 and 18. And I appreciate y'all time because the thing about it is the older generation, we all die, right? So the older generation is going to die off, but then the younger generation is going to come up. So the question is, is this next generation going to be like the older generation to where they're trying to overstep the order of the Most High God and not follow the structure of marriage? Or are we going to have some type of change in our communities where men and women are coming together under the banner of marriage that the Most High created, not the world? Because in the, in, the, in, in the world, if I get tired of you, I can march down to the courthouse and get divorce papers. The Most High God doesn't give me any other way to divorce you other than you committing fornication. So me getting tired of you is not a reason for divorcing. But in this world, you can do whatever you want to do. Read. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, and verse 18. Read. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, uh -huh. as it is fit in the Lord. Read. Husbands, love your wives, uh -huh. and be not bitter against them. Read. Children, obey your parents uh -huh. in all things. So if we have a wife that's submitting to the husband, a husband that's loving his wife, and a child that's, uh, that's obeying their parents, that's a great household, but we don't follow that format. The first thing is when we get together, we're not courting each other. We're not speaking about the Most High God. I like how you look, you like how I look, we lay down. Somehow you get pregnant. Well, I didn't think you was gonna get pregnant. So now I'm gonna go ahead and leave. Now you hate me, I hate you. You tell that baby things bad about me. I come and tell him things bad about you. And now we have destruction all over again. You get what I'm trying to say? So it's imperative that we teach our younger women, hey listen, the most high God created you and we have the most beautiful women on the planet. Nobody's debating that. But your pride, I'm not just saying pride, your value does not lie in that. Because the most high God, you cannot charm the most high God with your looks. He created you. What he wants to see is that quiet and meek spirit inside of you. Because that's what makes a man happy. Right? No, no, I agree, which is why you keep hearing me say, a man has to do his part also. But this is the thing about it. The only way we're going to get somewhere is everybody has to take accountability. Right. Let's say if there was three other men right here and I was telling him the same thing that I'm telling you, and let's say they didn't want to hear it, don't worry about that. You just do what you got to do. Because guess what? They might not want to listen, but there may be three other men who are working on themselves right now, and those may be your husbands in the future. So don't sell yourself short just because you're thinking about, well, the man isn't going to do it. The Most High God ain't, ain't worried about that. You just do what you got to do, and the Most High God will give you a husband that is going to show you and treat you as you should be treated. Likewise, you need to be ready to do that to him also. And the other thing about marriage is, give me Exodus 22 and 16. I understand the narrative is, live out your 20s, find out what you like, spread your wings, do all of that stuff. 
That's nonsense. Because when we look in the scriptures, a woman's virginity came with a price. In our culture as Israelites, let's say for instance, you lost your virginity, but nobody knew about it. Your father met this nice young man and said, you know what? I would like you to marry my daughter. You guys start courting, but remember, it's a secret. Nobody knows anything. You get married to this man and y'all have sex and he realizes you're not a virgin. According to the Bible, you got to be put to death. That's how serious a woman's virginity is. Is if you give it away in secret and somebody find and you try to act like you didn't do it, that's it. But guess what? Also, if you found to be fucked playing the whore, playing a whore in your father's house, that's also an offense. Because you're under your father and you were sneaking around. Read that for me. The book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 16. Read. Get out. And if a man entice a maid, uh -huh. that is not betrothed. That is what? That is not betrothed. All of you guys single at this point? Not you. Not you. Yeah. Okay. Go. And lie with her. And do what? And lie, lie with, with her. her. Uh huh. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Say it again. He shall, shall surely endow her to, to be, be his wife. wife. So according to the scriptures, if a man entices a maid, right? I like you. You look good. We start talking and we have sex. I must take you to be my wife. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to uh, 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 weigh my options. No. According to the scriptures, I must take you as my wife. If I don't, that's considered fornication because what I just did was commit an immoral sexual act. I laid with a woman without the intention to marry her. So that man is now your husband and you are his wife. In this society, they tell you to sleep around as if it means nothing. And then what makes you somebody's wife is when you have a ceremony and a ring. Not according to the Bible. Because we have to remember, who created marriage? God did. So he dictates how this goes. You are married to the man that you laid down with. So right now, in the eyes of God, that dude who you're with is your husband. Now, you might have gotten with him not knowing that. I understand, sis. I did the same thing a hundred times over. But when I came into the knowledge of this truth, I had to get myself right. Did I do, I, did I do it by the way? No, I'm going to be honest with you. But eventually, I got to that point and I love that life because now the Most High has showed me why he said to do it this way. Because that causes baby mamas and baby daddies when you don't. Let's imagine you would have got pregnant the first time you slept with him. And then he left. Now you a baby mama. But if y'all was married, it don't matter how many times you get pregnant. You can get pregnant five, you can get pregnant 50 times. It don't matter because it's your husband. He not going nowhere. So do you believe that like the men are hoes and whores and stuff? Yes, a man can be a whore. Yes, no, absolutely. No, no, no. Oh. My question is. <laughs> Like, you believe that if he finds God and he um, asks for forgiveness, he can turn from those bands of like wanting to sleep with other girls while he has a female? He can, he can, he can, he can certainly control his, he can certainly control his lust. Because when we act out of, when we, when we just want to sleep with the woman and that's it, of course that's lust. Yes, he can turn away from that, but he has to understand who he is according to the scriptures. Because the reason why we're convicted to keep God's laws is because we know that we're Israelites. If you just think that, well, I'm a Christian or I'm a black woman, well, then you really not hold to any standard except for what society tells you to be held to. But when you know that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, I'm from the tribe of Benjamin, this brother's from the tribe of Benjamin, we're all family, right? We're all distant cousins. So I don't want to see my cousins get pregnant and then be left. What I want to see is my cousins be married and be happy knowing that the reason they're enjoying this happiness is because everything was done how God said it should be done and not how the world said. We've seen enough examples of the world. Let's try God's ways, right? And let's do it genuinely, right? Not just in the manner of, well, I wanted to make it seem to everybody. No, as a woman, I'm going to search these scriptures and find out how to prepare myself to be a wife, right? Because you're preparing yourself to be a social worker. You're preparing yourself to be a business. You're preparing yourself to be a nurse. You're not just gonna walk into the job and say, I'm ready, somebody might end up dying. Right? Somebody, you might lose the kid that you're still staring after. Right? Your business might flop because you haven't prepared yourself to be in this position. You are young, beautiful women. You have to prepare yourself to be in this life position. And, huh? As a flop, perfect. That's the standard. That's the standard that you're trying to meet. And what I'm trying to meet is a standard like a man, as a standard like a man like Christ. That's my standard. 
I'm trying to be like him because he left us a great example. So everything that I'm trying to do, I'm trying to, I give, me and my wife, we got in a little spat today. And I'll be honest, because of these scriptures, man, and because of what we just read, I put it to the side, I apologize, right? Because I got a little rowdy. I apologize to him. Back then, probably I wouldn't have cared nothing about it. I would have went on about my day. But as maturing as a man, when I'm wrong, I got to admit that I'm wrong. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why we're able to come together after these things is because we follow by these scriptures here, man. Right? Me being in that leadership position, I should have handled the situation a little bit better. But all of these things come because I'm trying to be my best at following the word of the Most High God. And she understood, and we was able to good. Right? I didn't go out into the streets and do nothing crazy. She ain't go out to the streets and do nothing crazy. We were able to reconcile because we understand that, listen, the Most High God is in control of all of this. And if we're going to truly call ourselves men and women of the Lord, we have to handle things like how the Most High sing do. Don't be prideful. Go and apologize if you're wrong and reconcile with one another. Everything's good. Right? Instead of her calling her homegirls and then her homegirls tell her to do something crazy. I call my homeboys. They tell me to do something crazy. Now our relationship is damaged all because we didn't want to go and get counsel from the one who created marriage in the first place. A lot of these marriage counselors, they don't um, uh, 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 take into account what the Bible says. They just go off of what they feel you should do off of their expertise. Well, I'm going to go to the real expert. Right? So as young women, the message is just... We want, we want you guys to be able to have a, a platform where you can learn. So what we do is every Saturday at 12 p.m. we have the Sabbath service. The Sabbath day is from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And we teach our people the laws of God. Because the laws of God instill in us what we know as the Holy Spirit. Not only the laws of God, but also faith in Christ. So as we start to learn these laws, just like I brought out in Exodus 22, 16, that lets you know, hey, when you sleep with a woman, you got to take her to be your wife. These things stop the atrocities that we see happening in our community because the plan is to get better and return back unto the Lord. How is it that the Lord's holy people don't even have two parents in the household? That doesn't really make sense. How is it that the Lord's holy people are killing each other? How is it that the Lord's holy women are around, walking around half naked on South Beach? How is it that the Lord's holy men are shooting each other down and walking with their pants below their behind? That don't make sense. These are the holy people that you're talking about, God? That don't make sense. But it's not the Lord's fault, it's our fault. So just like you guys didn't know this information, we didn't know this information. So while we come out here is to give our people this information. Now the information is, your, is in your hand, you have to now grow by it by putting in the effort to seek out more knowledge, right? Because I'm pretty sure a man is going to approach you one day. I'm pretty sure a man is going to approach you one day. But now you know, hold on. According to Exodus 22, 16, right now we at the enticing part. Because I like what he's saying, right? I'm liking what he's saying. I'm probably going to give him my number. But I got to remember, I can't just hop and go into things with this man. Let me go to my father. Daddy, I met a young man, X, Y, and Z. I would like you to meet him, such and such and such and such. Right? Likewise, you meet his family. So the parents understand what's going on and what y'all are trying to do. We're trying to have a righteous relationship. Give me who's Susanna one and one and I'm gonna let y'all go, right? I really appreciate y'all because our women have so much power, but society has tricked them to believe that it relies just in their beauty. No, it relies in y'all spirit. Cause I'm telling y'all, man, we don't want to date a white woman. We don't want no Chinese women. We want our black women. I'm just going to keep it real. We don't want none of that, man. Right? You see young Jeezy, he had to get up out of there, man. Right? Because she can't understand him. She don't know what he going through. She can't even cook the food he like. He had to go get up out of there, man. He tried to. He thought it was cool. I got a foreign Chinese woman. And now he's tired of it. Because nobody want noodles every night. Huh? Right? You want the greens. You want the cornbread. You want the oxtail, man. You want the rice and peas. Nobody don't want noodles, bro. Read that. The Book of History of Susanna. Uh-huh. Uh, one and one. One and one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The History of Susanna. The History of Susanna. Um, so this, this book right here is called the Apocrypha. In the original King, the 1611 King James Version, the Bible that first Bible that was printed, yeah. this was included in there. They later removed it. But this has very vital information because it bridges the gap as far as to what happened. Uh uh. Um, between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. 
I don't know. I don't know if the Book of Enoch was was uh, was was originally in the 1611. I don't believe so. No, it wasn't in the original manuscript. Okay, it wasn't in the, it wasn't in the original manuscript. I know it is referenced, right? So I can't say that in in ancient times there wasn't a book, right? But the one that is 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 put forth today, we're unsure as to the authenticity of it. So we kind of don't rely too much on it. You get what I'm trying to say? Because there's some contraries that we see, we see between what we would call the canon Bible, right? Included with this apocrypha and the book of Enoch. So we kind of just stick with what we got here, all right? Just to, just to give a little backstory as to why you only see these two books here. All right, read. The book of history of Susanna. Uh-huh. There dwelt a man in Babylon right. called Josem. Uh-huh. And he took a wife. And he took a what? A wife. He took a wife. How do you think? How do you think she became his wife? What what act did they commit? Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Right? There, no, no, that's good. That's good. That's good. Because it's going to seep into your mind. The most high is going to remind you. Before you make that move, hey. Hey. That's your husband now. Right? That's your husband now. Right? You, 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 you're gonna be very cautious. And I know you're already in one. But in our culture, everybody is of the marriageable age when they hit 20. So uh, until 20, you ain't even supposed to be doing nothing. So right now you're eligible, right? How old are you? 17. Three years, you don't even think about it. Focus on your business. <laughs> don't even worry about it. You you kind of already, you know, you, you, you in that. But this is the conversation you have to have with him and say, listen, I'm not trying to be no baby mom, right? I learned that I'm an Israelite from the child of Benjamin. Where is he from? Bermuda. We both the Israelites from the child of Benjamin. Hey, I got this YouTube channel. They go over the laws of God every Saturday. Let's learn together, right? Because now you have to see what type of man this is going to be leading your life, man. Because the Most High God is going to be looking that you submit to Him. But if He's leading you down a path of wickedness, that's going to be a kind of a, 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 a stressful life to live. So I want you to read that. And He took a wife. Uh huh. Whose name was Susanna, right? the daughter of Chelsea, uh -huh. a very fair woman, uh -huh. and one that feared the Lord. So Susanna was a woman that was very beautiful, but she also what? Feared the Lord. So let's see how this fear of the Lord was instilled in her. Read. Her parents her also. What? Her parents also. Her parents also read. Were righteous. Were what? Were righteous. Were what? Were righteous. Were righteous. Read. And taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. So Susanna was a woman that feared the Lord because her parents taught her the law of Moses, which is what we teach on the, the Sabbath class. So in order for you to become God-fearing women, you now have to understand the laws of God because the laws of God allow you to fear, respect Him, because these are the things that He commanded you to do. And that then builds that Holy Spirit inside of you. Because now when you understand that you're not supposed to do certain things, you're not going to do them. They mean Levit uh, Leviticus 23 and 17. No whores of the daughters on our camp. Leviticus 20 and 23 17. Right? Look at this law. Deuteronomy 23 and 17. Deuteronomy 23 17. Read that. Yeah, Deuteronomy 23 17. All right. The book of Deuteronomy. Uh huh. Chapter 23. Uh huh. Verse 17. 17. Uh -huh. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Read it again. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. There should be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So the advice that you got from women that said to sleep around, that's contrary to the law of God. God said there should be no whore of the daughter of Zion. When you get married, the only way that you're going to ever be with another man is if that man dies. This is the math that we do. The amount of sex partners you have, the amount of husbands you have. So you had one husband, right? That's one sex partner, one husband. This husband probably died, now you had two sex partners, and now you had two husbands. And that's the same thing for a man, right? If I had three sex partners, I had three wives. That's how the math should be mapped, right? But in this society, you don't math like that, right? Forget my past, I was young, I was whatever. That don't work like that. Keep reading. Keep finish that out. Uh, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So there should be no type of homosexual man that's in Israel. We should all be men. You all should be women. We all should be coming together under the righteousness of God. We should be bearing children, and there should be two parent households. 
on every block. That's what it is. So you guys have the opportunity to rebuild our nation the way that it's supposed to be because that's what God takes to life. I know we want to make mommy proud. I know we want to make daddy proud. But when we start making him proud, that's a different level of joy because I'm literally making the man proud who created the ocean and the trees and all the, the mangoes and all the, the, the fruits. And this the man I'm making happy? All by being submissive to my husband and not being a whore. Right? Read. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. Read out. I would therefore uh -huh. that the younger women marry. That they do what? That the younger, younger women, women marry. That they sleep around. That the, the younger, younger women, women marry. That they spread their wings. That, that the, the younger, younger women, women marry. marry. Bear children. Uh huh. Guide the house. Uh huh. Give not occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So what it say? Have children. Right. Be married. Have children. Guide the house. My wife she's getting used to that now. Guiding the house. But as young women. That's how you're supposed to be taught. Hey, one day you're gonna be married. Your mother said, let me show you how to, let me show you how to guide the house. Let me show you how to be a wife, right? And don't give any place to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So don't do things that, hey, what was the name, sis? Malay, Malaysia? I ain't gonna lie. I, let, let's say I'm talking to your, your, your boy. I ain't gonna lie, I see Malaysia. Uh, I mean, I don't know, it was about two o'clock in the morning. I seen her walking out of, uh, uh, of the Marriott. She letting Usher sing to her? Right, she, she, I, I, mean, yeah. she let, I, I mean, I saw some things, bro. Don't give no place to the adversary. Because only Satan could have put that in your spirit for you to do what you were doing at the Marriott. Right? The Most High God said submit to your husband. So ain't no way in hell you with somebody else at the Marriott if you truly submit to your husband. So the Bible, if followed correctly, guarantees a good marriage. Gold is precious, but loyalty is price. I don't wanna mind, might leave you like.